What was the Frankfurt School? The Frankfurt School was the intellectual activity associated with the Institute for Social Research in Frankfurt am Main, Germany. The institute was made possible by a gift from Felix Weil. 1898-1975, in 1923, following the first Marxist week, which was very well received by intellectuals. The institute was, in addition, funded by Frankfurt University and, during the Nazi period, 1933-1944. Max Horkmeyer, 1895-1973, and Theodore Adorno, 1903-1969, secured the support of Columbia University to set up its exiled version as the International Institute of Social Research in New York City. The institute in Frankfurt was reinstated after World War II ended in 1945. Walter Benjamin 1892-1940 Herbert Marcuse, 1898-1979, and Eric Fromm, 1900-1980, were also among its first generation of members. Jürgen Habermas, 1923, remains its most famous contemporary member. Hannah Arendt, 1906 to 1975 had political interests that implied she had more in common with the Frankfurt School than any other movement despite striking out on her own as an American philosopher after leaving Germany although not part of the Frankfurt School because he was imprisoned by the Italian fascist Government in 1926, the Marxist theorist Antonio Gramsci, 1891-1937, deserves mention in this context. What was the Frankfurt School? The Frankfurt School was the intellectual activity associated with the Institute for Social Research in Frankfurt am Main, Germany. The institute was made possible by a gift from Felix Weil. 1898-1975, in 1923, following the first Marxist week, which was very well received by intellectuals. The institute was, in addition, funded by Frankfurt University and, during the Nazi period, 1933-1944. Max Horkmeyer, 1895-1973, and Theodore Adorno, 1903-1969, secured the support of Columbia University to set up its exiled version as the International Institute of Social Research in New York City. The institute in Frankfurt was reinstated after World War II ended in 1945. Walter Benjamin, 1892-1940 Herbert Marcuse, 1898-1979, and Eric Fromm, 1900-1980 were also among its first generation of members. Jürgen Habermas, 1923, remains its most famous contemporary member. Hannah Arendt, 1906-1975, had political interests that implied she had more in common with the Frankfurt School than any other movement. Despite striking out on her own as an American philosopher after leaving Germany. 
although not part of the Frankfurt School because he was imprisoned by the Italian fascist. Government in 1926, the Marxist theorist Antonio Gramsci, 1891-1937, deserves mention in this context. Who was Antonio Gramsci? While Antonio Gramsci, 1891-1937, was in prison he worked out his version of Marxism, which was mainly a revolt against Karl Marx's, 1818-1883, historical determinism. Gramsci's prison notebooks, compiled after his death, beginning in 1971, was edited for publication by Palmero Togliatti who succeeded him as leader of the Italian Communists. According to Togliatti, education and persuasion were the paths to reform toward a classless society. Rather than Bolshevism or direct political revolution. Gramsci's most influential idea has been what Togliatti called Gramsci's theory of hegemony whereby the dominant class in society creates not only its own ideology, but also that of the classes dominated by it all classes share the ideology of the dominant class. Hence, education and persuasion are important to change the social mass mind, so that political change can evolve. In this sense, it could be said that Gramsci was not only a member in spirit of the Frankfurt School. He was also a structuralist. Who was Antonio Gramsci? While Antonio Gramsci, 1891-1937, was in prison he worked out his version of Marxism, which was mainly a revolt against Karl Marx's, 1818-1883, historical determinism. Gramsci's prison notebooks, compiled after his death, beginning in 1971, was edited for publication by Palmero Togliatti who succeeded him as leader of the Italian Communists. According to Togliatti, education and persuasion were the paths to reform toward a classless society. Rather than Bolshevism or direct political revolution. Gramsci's most influential idea has been what Togliatti called Gramsci's theory of hegemony whereby the dominant class in society creates not only its own ideology, but also that of the classes dominated by it all classes share the ideology of the dominant class. Hence, education and persuasion are important to change the social mass mind, so that political change can evolve. In this sense, it could be said that Gramsci was not only a member in spirit of the Frankfurt School. He was also a structuralist. Who were Max Horkheimer and Theodore Adorno? Max Horkheimer, 1893-1973, and Theodore Adorno, 1903-1969, were founding members of the Frankfurt School and they were its leaders in exile. 
Horkheimer was a cultural critic and social philosopher. Adorno was a cultural critic and musicologist. Horkheimer's ideal was a general understanding of the place of human beings in society. He thought, contrary to orthodox Marxists who often viewed society from the standpoint of the proletariat, that no social class at that time escaped distortions in its social worldview. Adorno thought that Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg's atonal music supported human autonomy or freedom. And he strongly condemned jazz as a form of music for the masses, in contrast, in a way. Given their shared view that Marxism should not be culturally centered on the proletariat, it is not surprising that Horkheimer and Adorno collaborated, producing Dialectic of Enlightenment, 1974. They argued that the progress sought in the Enlightenment could not be achieved and that instead the result would be either mass capitalistic vulgarity in a consumer economy, or totalitarian brutality. Who were Max Horkheimer and Theodore Adorno? Max Horkheimer, 1893-1973, and Theodore Adorno, 1903-1969, were founding members of the Frankfurt School and they were its leaders in exile. Horkheimer was a cultural critic and social philosopher. Adorno was a cultural critic and musicologist. Horkheimer's ideal was a general understanding of the place of human beings in society. He thought, contrary to orthodox Marxists who often viewed society from the standpoint of the proletariat, that no social class at that time escaped distortions in its social worldview. Adorno thought that Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg's atonal music supported human autonomy or freedom. And he strongly condemned jazz as a form of music for the masses, in contrast, in a way. Given their shared view that Marxism should not be culturally centered on the proletariat, it is not surprising that Horkheimer and Adorno collaborated, producing Dialectic of Enlightenment, 1974. They argued that the progress sought in the Enlightenment could not be achieved and that instead the result would be either mass capitalistic vulgarity in a consumer economy, or totalitarian brutality. Who was Walter Benjamin? Walter Benjamin, 1892-1940 Is highly regarded for the ways in which he combined Jewish religious insights with Marxism. He died from taking morphine pills in Purtbu on the French-Spanish border. While traveling with a group of intellectuals escaping from the Nazis. Different theories have been advanced about his death. That he committed suicide to avoid torture by the Gestapo for himself and his colleagues, or that Stalinists killed him. Benjamin was Hannah Arendt's, 1906 to 1975, first husband's cousin. Before he died he gave Arendt the manuscript to his The Concept of History, 1939. Which she gave to Theodore Adorno, 1903-1969, who had it published in the United States. 
in his major work The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. 1936, he combined Jewish mysticism with Marxism. Benjamin thought that logic was limited as a philosophical tool because in modern times the philosophical is best accessed through literature and music. He was studied mainly for his theories in musicology. Until his work was recognized to be highly relevant for postmodernism in the late 20th century. Who was Walter Benjamin? Walter Benjamin, 1892-1940 Is highly regarded for the ways in which he combined Jewish religious insights with Marxism. He died from taking morphine pills in Purtbu on the French-Spanish border. While traveling with a group of intellectuals escaping from the Nazis. Different theories have been advanced about his death that he committed suicide to avoid torture by the Gestapo for himself and his colleagues, or that Stalinists killed him. Benjamin was Hannah Arendt's, 1906-1975, first husband's cousin. Before he died he gave Arendt the manuscript to his The Concept of History, 1939, which she gave to Theodore Adorno, 1903 to 1969, who had it published in the United States. In his major work The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. 1936, he combined Jewish mysticism with Marxism. Benjamin thought that logic was limited as a philosophical tool because in Modern times the philosophical is best accessed through literature and music. He was studied mainly for his theories in musicology. Until his work was recognized to be highly relevant for postmodernism in the late 20th century. Who was Hannah Arendt? Hannah Arendt, 1906-1975, was a German-American social and political philosopher who taught at the New School after World War II. She attended the University of Marburg, where she began the affair with Martin Heidegger. 1889-1976, that was to become a lifelong relationship. They broke up and came together repeatedly. Arendt wrote her dissertation on St. Augustine with Karl Jaspers, 1883-1969, at Heidelberg University. She was married to the philosopher Gunther Anders, 1902-1992, in 1929, but they divorced. In 1937. She was not allowed to continue her habilitation because she was a Jew. After beginning an investigation on anti-Semitism, she was questioned by the Gestapo. She then went to France, and worked with Walter Benjamin, 1892-1940, in helping Jewish refugees. Her own imprisonment at Camp Gers ended with her escape. In 1940 Arendt married Heinrich Blücher, 1899-1970, a poet, philosopher, and former communist. With Blücher and her mother, she escaped to the United States from Vichy. 
France on phony visas, with the assistance of Hiram Bingham IV, an American diplomat. After World War II, Arendt testified for Heidegger in a denazification hearing. And she wrote an admiring essay about his work in a philosophical celebration of his 80th birthday. Arendt was director of research for the Commission of European Jewish Cultural Reconstruction, which led to frequent returns to Germany after 1944. In the United States she taught at the University of California at Berkeley. Princeton University, Northwestern University, and the New School. She was not particularly progressive in the American social context. Supporting racial segregation at the beginning of the civil rights movement. And refusing to be identified as a feminist during the period of women's liberation. Her main works are The Origins of Totalitarianism, 1951, The Human Condition, 1958. On Revolution, 1963, On Violence, 1970, Eichmann in Jerusalem, 1963, and The Life of the Mind, 1978. Who was Hannah Arendt? Hannah Arendt, 1906-1975, was a German-American social and political philosopher who taught at the New School after World War II. She attended the University of Marburg, where she began the affair with Martin Heidegger. 1889-1976, that was to become a lifelong relationship. They broke up and came together repeatedly. Arendt wrote her dissertation on St. Augustine with Karl Jaspers, 1883-1969, at Heidelberg University. She was married to the philosopher Gunther Anders, 1902-1992, in 1929, but they divorced. In 1937, she was not allowed to continue her habilitation because she was a Jew. After beginning an investigation on anti-Semitism, she was questioned by the Gestapo. She then went to France, and worked with Walter Benjamin, 1892-1940, in helping Jewish refugees. Her own imprisonment at Camp Gers ended with her escape. In 1940 Arendt married Heinrich Blücher, 1899-1970, a poet, philosopher, and former communist. With Blücher and her mother, she escaped to the United States from Vichy. France on phony visas, with the assistance of Hiram Bingham IV, an American diplomat. After World War II, Arendt testified for Heidegger in a denazification hearing. And she wrote an admiring essay about his work in a philosophical celebration of his 80th birthday. Arendt was director of research for the Commission of European Jewish Cultural Reconstruction, which led to frequent returns to Germany after 1944. In the United States she taught at the University of California at Berkeley. Princeton University, Northwestern University, and the New School. She was not particularly progressive in the American social context. Supporting racial segregation at the beginning of the civil rights movement. And refusing to be identified as a feminist during the period of women's liberation. 
Her main works are The Origins of Totalitarianism, 1951, The Human Condition, 1958. On Revolution, 1963, On Violence, 1970, Eichmann in Jerusalem, 1963, and The Life of the Mind, 1978. What was Hannah Arendt's political philosophy? Overall, Arendt was a strong critic of totalitarianism and an advocate of individual freedom. Offering distinctive insights She believed that both fascism and communism arose under illusions of Inevitability based on the lack of real political community in modern life. She did not consider herself an existentialist because she thought We are is a more important starting point for philosophy than I am. Her positive model of society was active citizen participation in Ways that leave social and private interests out of civic identities. Arendt's analysis of the trial of the Nazi Adolf Eichmann, in which she introduced the concept of the banality of evil, was very controversial for her criticism of how Eichmann's trial was conducted in Israel, and how Jewish leaders had behaved under German dictator Adolf Hitler. Arendt's last work was an examination of practical judgment in political contexts, in which she used the figure of Socrates, 460 to 399 BCE, to posit inner dialogues. Conscience, she said, had the role of supporting friendship with oneself. What was Hannah Arendt's political philosophy? Overall, Arendt was a strong critic of totalitarianism and an advocate of individual freedom. Offering distinctive insights She believed that both fascism and communism arose under illusions of Inevitability based on the lack of real political community in modern life. She did not consider herself an existentialist because she thought We are is a more important starting point for philosophy than I am. Her positive model of society was active citizen participation in Ways that leave social and private interests out of civic identities. Arendt's analysis of the trial of the Nazi Adolf Eichmann, in which she introduced the concept of the banality of evil, was very controversial for her criticism of how Eichmann's trial was conducted in Israel, and how Jewish leaders had behaved under German dictator Adolf Hitler. Arendt's last work was an examination of practical judgment in political contexts, in which she used the figure of Socrates, 460 to 399 BCE, to posit inner dialogues. Conscience, she said, had the role of supporting friendship with oneself. Who was Herbert Marcuse? Herbert Marcuse, 1898 to 1979, 
generally inspired left-wing thought in the United States after he was exiled from Germany in 1933. He was. For example, African-American political activist Angela Davis dissertation advisor. And Abby Hoffman, one of the radical founders of the New Left, studied with him as well. Marcuse's primary theme was that philosophy is necessary to combat political oppression. He drew on Friedrich Nietzsche, 1844-1900, and Sigmund Freud, 1856-1939, to criticize Marxism for its underlying Enlightenment faith in reason. He thought that Western democracies, as well as communist regimes, used scientific methods to deprive people of freedom through mass education and the trivialization of culture into entertainment. His major theme was the ways in which political repression was mirrored in psychosexual repression. His main works include Reason and Revolution, 1941, Eros and Civilization, 1955, One Dimensional Man, 1964, and Critique of Pure Tolerance, 1969. Who was Herbert Marcuse? Herbert Marcuse, 1898 to 1979, generally inspired left-wing thought in the United States after he was exiled from Germany in 1933. He was, for example, African American political activist Angela Davis dissertation advisor, and Abby Hoffman, one of the radical founders of the New Left, studied with him as well. Marcuse's primary theme was that philosophy is necessary to combat political oppression. He drew on Friedrich Nietzsche, 1844-1900, and Sigmund Freud, 1856-1939, to criticize Marxism for its underlying Enlightenment faith in reason. He thought that Western democracies, as well as communist regimes, used scientific methods to deprive people of freedom through mass education and the trivialization of culture into entertainment. His major theme was the ways in which political repression was mirrored in psychosexual repression. His main works include Reason and Revolution, 1941, Eros and Civilization. 1955, One Dimensional Man, 1964, and Critique of Pure Tolerance, 1969. Who is Angela Davis? Angela Davis, 1944, is a world-famous African-American social critic and political activist. In 1970, she was acting assistant professor in the philosophy department at the University of California. Los Angeles, and a member of the Communist Party USA. She was also once associated with the Black Panther Party. Davis was criminally indicted for helping Black Panther member George Jackson to escape from a courtroom in Marin County, California, in 1970. The guns Jackson used were registered in Angela Davis' name. She was for a while on the FBI's most wanted list after she fled arrest. In the end, 
Davis was acquitted of criminal charges and was rehired at the university. Davis claimed that she never completed her dissertation. Because it was lost in papers confiscated by the FBI. She has since developed a distinguished career in critical writings about race and gender as well as the prison industrial complex in contemporary American culture. Davis' principal works include If They Come in the Morning, Voices of Resistance, 1971. Frame Up, The Opening Defense Statement Made, 1972, Angela Davis, An Autobiography. 1974, Women, Race and Class, 1981, Violence Against Women and the Ongoing Challenge to Racism. 1985, Women, Culture and Politics, 1989, Blues Legacies and Black Feminism. Gertrude Marini, Bessie Smith, and Billie Holiday, 1999, Are Prisons Obsolete? 2003, An Abolition Democracy, Beyond Prisons, Torture, and Empire, 2005. Who is Angela Davis? Angela Davis, 1944, is a world-famous African-American social critic and political activist. In 1970, she was acting assistant professor in the philosophy department at the University of California. Los Angeles, and a member of the Communist Party USA. She was also once associated with the Black Panther Party. Davis was criminally indicted for helping Black Panther member George Jackson to escape from a courtroom in Marin County, California, in 1970. The guns Jackson used were registered in Angela Davis' name. She was for a while on the FBI's most wanted list after she fled arrest. In the end, Davis was acquitted of criminal charges and was rehired at the university. Davis claimed that she never completed her dissertation because it was lost in papers confiscated by the FBI. She has since developed a distinguished career in critical writings about race and gender as well as the prison industrial complex in contemporary American culture. Davis' principal works include If They Come in the Morning, Voices of Resistance, 1971. Frame Up, The Opening Defense Statement Made, 1972, Angela Davis, An Autobiography. 1974, Women, Race and Class, 1981, Violence Against Women and the Ongoing Challenge to Racism. 1985, Women, Culture and Politics, 1989, Blues Legacies and Black Feminism. Gertrude Marini, Bessie Smith, and Billie Holiday, 1999, Are Prisons Obsolete? 2003, An Abolition Democracy, Beyond Prisons, Torture, and Empire, 2005. What was Sigmund Freud's interpretation of hysteria? At first, Freud, along with his mentor Joseph Brewer, 
advanced the hypothesis that people suffering from hysterics have buried memories of trauma. Treatment consisted in recovering those memories and a cathartic discharge of the affect or emotion associated with them at the outset. Freud thought that the source of the repression was sexual molestation by male relatives. He revised this seduction theory when he realized that if the sole cause of hysteria was repressed memories, there was no reason why it should not resolve itself by being discharged in hysterical. Symptoms Taking a page from Franz Brentano, and perhaps Alexius Menon, 1853-1920, as well. He theorized that it could be fantasy revealing itself in the form of repressed desires that was the key. This led to Freud's Oedipal theory. Who was Herbert Spencer? Herbert Spencer, 1820-1903, was a philosopher and social reformer who was assistant editor-in-chief of The Economist. He also wrote for the Westminster Review, while George Eliot was its editor. Spencer was an atheist, without any training in the humanities. And he believed that only science could yield useful knowledge. In his ethics, he combined Jeremy Bentham's, 1748-1832, version of utilitarianism with John Stuart Mill's, 1806-1873, view that happiness is the true end. Spencer thought that pleasure and pain were evidence of happiness or unhappiness. Spencer is best known for his evolutionary views that predated Charles Darwin's publication of On the Origin of the Species by Means of Natural Selection, 1859. Spencer's main publications were works he published in his major project system of synthetic philosophy. Beginning in the 1850s, and 1884's The Man vs. the State. Who was Edith Stein? Edith Stein, 1891-1942, was canonized by Pope John Paul II in 1998 as Saint Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. She was born into an observant Jewish family in the Central European region of Silesia, which was then part of the German Empire. In 1932 she denounced the Nazi regime to Pope Pius XI. She converted to Roman Catholicism in 1922 and was received into the Discalced Carmelite Order in 1934 in a retaliatory move against Jewish converts in the Netherlands, where the Carmelites had sent Stein for safety. She and her sister Rosa were transported to the Auschwitz concentration camp. They died there in the gas chamber in 1942. Stein was a student of Edmund Husserl, 1859-1938. First at Göttingen University and then at Freiburg, where she became his assistant. Her doctorate was on the problem of empathy. She became a faculty member at Freiburg University after working with Martin Heidegger in preparing Husserl's manuscripts for publication. As a Jewish woman, she was barred from further postgraduate 
studies at Freiburg and other German universities. She finally gave up her assistantship to Husserl and began to teach in Catholic girls' schools. Learning about Thomas Aquinas, c. 1225 to 1274, and Catholic philosophy in general. She did become a lecturer at the Institute for Pedagogy at Munster, but had to give it up due to anti-Semitic laws in 1933, the same year that her former colleague Martin Heidegger. 1889 to 1976 was made rector of Freiburg University. The miracle Edith Stein is supposed to have performed that of curing a child who had overdosed on acetaminophen in response to a prayer from relatives is disputed by some Jewish groups who claim it is not clear whether she is a genuine martyr. Her legacy includes numerous writings, some of which were translated into English in the 1980s and 1990s. Life in a Jewish Family, her unfinished autobiographical account, 1986. On the Problem of Empathy, 1989, Essays on Women, 1996, and The Hidden Life, 1993. Stein also wrote Knowledge and Faith, Finite and Eternal Being. An Attempt to an Ascent to the Meaning of Being, Philosophy of Psychology and the Humanities. Self-Portrait in Letters, which have not yet been translated into English or published. How is sociology related to philosophy? Social and political philosophers discuss society and criticize culture. Sociology is the science that can give them factual information about what they are discussing. What were Herbert Spencer's ideas about evolution? Spencer believed that change occurs according to the law of evolution, which dictates a progression from simplicity to homogeneity to uniformity to more complexity to heterogeneity to variety. At any stage, all of the parts that are changing are also part of one whole. Spencer cited as evidence examples from the physical, biological, psychological, and social sciences. Society itself evolves from primitive homogeneous forms to complex advanced ones. He pointed out, whereby component parts have different functions. Because Spencer thought that change follows its own internal rules. He believed that social progress cannot be the result of external actions, such as social welfare or the regulation of trade. In education, he believed that children should be taught skills that would best enable them to compete with others. Spencer's views were taken up by social Darwinists, who advocated the principles of the survival of the fittest for society. Against social reform generally, and in favor of capitalistic competition, specifically. Who was Edmund Husserl? Edmund Husserl, 1859-1938
is recognized as the founder of phenomenology as a systematic method of philosophy. He also created an important and new perspective on logic and mathematics, which distinguished them from empirically discovered psychological rules of thought. Husserl's major works are Logical Investigations, 1900, The Idea of Phenomenology, 1907, and Ideas Pertaining to a Pure Phenomenology and to a Phenomenological Investigation, 1913. What are some key facts about Edmund Husserl's life and career? Husserl was born in Prosnitz, Moravia, which became part of Czechoslovakia after World War I and is now in the Czech Republic. His family was Jewish. Husserl studied mathematics in Leipzig and Berlin. And then got his PhD in Vienna in 1883, writing contributions to the calculus of variations that year. For the next two years, he studied psychology and philosophy with Franz Brentano. 1837-1917, and then went to the University of Halle for his habilitation. Preparation for University Teaching, under a student of Brentano. He wrote on the concept of number, which he revised four years later, in 1891, as philosophy of arithmetic. In 1886 Husserl converted to Christianity, taking the name Edmund Gustav Albrecht Husserl. The next year, he married Malvine Steinschneider, who was to prove a valuable source of information about his work and intentions to academic colleagues. They had a daughter and two sons. In 1901, the Husserls moved to the University of Göttingen. He was promoted to Ordenlichen Professor in 1906, and the next year he traveled. To Italy to see Brentano. Husserl was at this time in correspondence with Wilhelm Dilthe and leading mathematicians, as well as philosophers, about their work and his. German psychologist and philosopher Karl Jaspers. 1883 to 1969, visited him in 1913, the same year Edain was published. While visiting his son Wolfgang, who was injured in World War I, Husserl experienced nicotine poisoning. In 1916 Husserl was appointed to a professorship in Freiburg. Wolfgang was killed in action that year. For the next two years, Edith Stein was his assistant, as was philosopher Martin Heidegger. 1889-1976, for whom he obtained a lectureship and helped get an assistant. Professorship in 1919. The next year, his son Gerhard was wounded, although he recovered. Over the following decade, Husserl and Heidegger were in contact, exchanging ideas and manuscripts. Because of his Jewish birth, in 1933 the German government barred Husserl from using the library at Freiburg University or any other German academic institution. Although after an immediate public outcry, he was reinstated a week later by a decree. Husserl resigned from the Deutsche Akademie several months after that. His leaving was not only a matter of what had happened at Freiburg, but of the growing danger to all Jews in Germany at that time. 
he was then appointed to the School of Philosophy at the University of Southern California. But declined because his assistant, Eugen Fink, was not permitted to accompany him. Husserl was not allowed to participate in the Paris Congress of Philosophers. In 1937, at his cremation the next year, Eugen Fink eulogized him. Fink had been Husserl's dedicated and collaborative research assistant for ten years. In his own work, Fink was to eventually turn from Husserl's philosophical perspective to that of Heidegger. Husserl had only published six books during his lifetime. But he had a huge collection of papers and manuscripts. Fearing that the Nazis would destroy them, the Belgian philosopher Hermann Leo van Breda 1911-1974, took them out of Germany, where they became part of the Husserl archives in Louvain after World War II. What was Hannah Arendt's political philosophy? Overall, Arendt was a strong critic of totalitarianism and an advocate of individual freedom. Offering distinctive insights She believed that both fascism and communism arose under illusions of Inevitability based on the lack of real political community in modern life. She did not consider herself an existentialist because she thought We are is a more important starting point for philosophy than I am. Her positive model of society was active citizen participation in Ways that leave social and private interests out of civic identities. Arendt's analysis of the trial of the Nazi Adolf Eichmann, in which she introduced the concept of the banality of evil, was very controversial for her criticism of how Eichmann's trial was conducted in Israel, and how Jewish leaders had behaved under German dictator Adolf Hitler. Arendt's last work was an examination of practical judgment in political contexts, in which she used the figure of Socrates, 460-399 BCE, to posit inner dialogues. Conscience, she said, had the role of supporting friendship with oneself. What was Edmund Husserl's phenomenological method? Husserl thought the task of the philosopher was to perform an empirical reduction of intentional objects of consciousness by describing what is in the mind without making a commitment to the reality of the mental content. That is, Husserl thought that we should describe what appears to be so to us without making a commitment that it is so, e. g. My cat is sitting on my computer, but Husserl would prefer that I stick to my impressions or the representations in my mind of the cat sitting on the computer. This is a special perspective distinctive from the natural attitudes of ordinary people and scientists who address actual things that exist in the world. For Husserl, there is no philosophical distinction between a content of consciousness that is a dream or a fantasy and one that corresponds to something happening in reality. There were 
however, different types of reduction for Husserl. Most notably epoche in which the truth and reality of the objects of consciousness are bracketed. This bracketing of truth or reality was exactly the same. Thing as not making a commitment to the truth or reality. Husserl would have wanted me to describe the cat on my computer and my perception of it. But to stop short of claiming that the cat really is sitting on my commuter. Also influential was Husserl's eidetic reduction that had as its subjects acts of consciousness itself. An eidetic intuition that pertained to the essences of objects of consciousness. Thus, analysis of perception, which is something that consciousness does, would be an example of eidetic reduction. Whereas analysis of what is being perceived would be an example of eidetic intuition. This distinction was to prove very influential in Jean-Paul Sartre's philosophy. Where he distinguished between consciousness as awareness and what we are conscious or aware of. What were Emile Durkheim's main ideas? Durkheim thought that the horde, or non-organized group, was the simplest kind of society. And he analyzed existing tribal societies as having developed simple methods of social organization from their recent horde. Past. Social complexity was an evolutionary process, and in the societies of his day. Durkheim addressed the problems attending their complexity, such as individualism and dissolution of older forms of solidarity. Because modern societies were based on divisions of labor. The best way to solve these problems was through professional and trade organizations. Durkheim believed that religion could be understood as a reverence for those social norms and traditions that shaped human life. Who was Walter Benjamin? Walter Benjamin, 1892-1940 is highly regarded for the ways in which he combined Jewish religious insights with Marxism. He died from taking morphine pills in Puertbu on the French-Spanish border. While traveling with a group of intellectuals escaping from the Nazis. Different theories have been advanced about his death. That he committed suicide to avoid torture by the Gestapo for himself and his colleagues, or that Stalinists killed him. Benjamin was Hannah Arendt's, 1906-1975, first husband's cousin. Before he died he gave Arendt the manuscript to his The Concept of History, 1939. Which she gave to Theodore Adorno, 1903 to 1969, who had it published in the United States. In his major work The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. 1936, he combined Jewish mysticism with Marxism. Benjamin thought that logic was limited as a philosophical tool because in Modern times the philosophical is best accessed through literature and music. He was studied mainly for his theories in musicology. Until his work was recognized to be highly relevant for postmodernism in the late 20th century.
What was ironic about Maurice Merleau-Ponty's last lecture? Merleau-Ponty died suddenly of a stroke while preparing to give a lecture on René Descartes, 1596-1650. He repeatedly returned to Descartes' split between the mind and the body in composing his own philosophy. He did not accept the Cartesian split, but sought to address the mind and body as a united whole. Merleau-Ponty thought that a person's own body, le corps propre, should be in its personal, individual, lived reality, a scientific subject. It is one's own body that makes consciousness corporeal. He wrote, Insofar as I have hands, feet, a body, I sustain around me intentions which are not dependent on my decisions and which affect my surroundings in a way that I do not choose. Clearly, Merleau-Ponty's stroke proves this point because it was not something he chose. But definitely something that conclusively affected not only his surroundings but the possibility of his even having those surroundings. What's ironic is that he made his point by having a stroke, which is very different from making a philosophical argument. What are some facts about Maurice Merleau-Ponty's life and career? Merleau-Ponty's father was killed in World War I. He completed his philosophical studies at the École Normale. Superior in 1930 and then taught in high schools throughout France. He wrote two dissertations for his doctorate and was given the chair of child psychology at the Sorbonne in 1949, next. He was made chair of philosophy at the Collège de France in 1952, with Jean-Paul Sartre. 1905-1980, he founded the journal Les Temps Modernes. But he resigned from the publication as editor, partly in objection to Sartre's subject-object dichotomy. Merleau-Ponty wrote about their dispute in Adventures of the Dialectic, 1955. Overall, Merleau-Ponty opposed dualisms and he also criticized self versus world ideas. He thought that the self was as much a body as a mind and that our bodies are always in the world. How did Edmund Husserl separate mathematics and logic from psychology? First, Husserl distinguished between numbers that are the result of counting actual objects before us and numbers as symbols. Clearly, most of mathematics deals with numbers as symbols. Husserl claimed that symbolic numbers, as well as propositions and universals, cannot be reduced to mental states, as psychologism claimed. As intentional objects of consciousness, in Franz Brentano's 1837-1917, sense of intentionality, these logical and mathematical entities are objective. What did Emile Durkheim contribute to the study of suicide?
First of all, Dewar came to find suicide as follows. T. He term suicide is applied to all cases of death resulting directly or indirectly from a positive or negative act of the victim himself, which he knows will produce this result. Second, he systematically catalogued suicide rates in modern society and analyzed his data into four main types. Egoistic, altruistic, anomic, and fatalistic. Egoistic suicide resulted from insufficient social ties. Altruistic from too much involvement in social relationships. Anomic suicide was the result of acute or chronic crises typical of conditions in contemporary life. Especially economic deprivation. Fatalistic suicide occurred only in exceptional conditions of difficult life circumstances. Such as slavery. What is the difference between critical theory and structuralism? There is no clear distinction of practice that practitioners of both schools of thought would accept. Many structuralists denied being structuralists and some Critical theorists were unaware of the term critical theory. But from the standpoint of a reader, it may help to keep in mind that both structuralism and critical theory provide analyses of society that need not be accepted by the members of society being analyzed. The term critical theory is associated with the Frankfurt School which developed the 20th century version of scholarly Marxism. The term structuralism refers to a study of mental structures in society. Critical theory seeks to provide analyses that further progressive and egalitarian social goal. Structuralism also uses critical theory. Although the members and followers of the Frankfurt School were not narrowly political, their Marxist legacy tended to point them in certain political directions. While structuralists might have shared certain goals with Marxian critical theorists, their subjects were other social institutions besides government. They also took up Freudian psychology and were instrumental in laying the foundations for a new focus on language and symbols as an important philosophical subject. In some quarters, given the successors or intellectual heirs of structuralism, language and the symbolic order became the only intellectual subject. That is, the structuralists paved the way for intellectual postmodernism, which is also known as post structuralism. Who is Angela Davis? Angela Davis, 1944, is a world-famous African-American social critic and political activist. In 1970, she was acting assistant professor in the philosophy department at the University of California, Los Angeles, and a member of the Communist Party USA. She was also once associated with the Black Panther Party. Davis was criminally indicted for helping Black Panther member George Jackson to escape from a courtroom in Marin County, California, 
in 1970. The guns Jackson used were registered in Angela Davis' name. She was for a while on the FBI's most wanted list after she fled arrest. In the end, Davis was acquitted of criminal charges and was rehired at the university. Davis claimed that she never completed her dissertation because it was lost in papers confiscated by the FBI. She has since developed a distinguished career in critical writings about race and gender as well as the prison industrial complex in contemporary American culture. Davis' principal works include If They Come in the Morning, Voices of Resistance, 1971. Frame Up, The Opening Defense Statement Made, 1972, Angela Davis, An Autobiography. 1974, Women, Race and Class, 1981, Violence Against Women and the Ongoing Challenge to Racism. 1985, Women, Culture and Politics, 1989, Blues Legacies and Black Feminism. Gertrude Marini, Bessie Smith, and Billie Holiday, 1999, Are Prisons Obsolete? 2003, An Abolition Democracy, Beyond Prisons, Torture, and Empire, 2005. What were the ideas of some of the humanist existentialists? Hans Jonas, 1903-1993, was influenced by phenomenology as well as existentialism. But some of his most original work has been directly relevant to environmental concerns and thought about the nature of life. In The Imperative of Responsibility, 1979. He argues for ethical responsibility for the planet to fight the incursions of technology. In The Phenomenon of Life, 1966, he argues against standard biological approaches that objectify living things and seek to explain their behavior via mere chemistry or mechanistic hereditary forces. Jonas' positive thesis is that all life forms, even single cells, have some form of awareness and they strive from their own physicality and perspective on the world. Awareness on a cellular level does not imply the presence of the cogito a mind it is. Sufficient if the living entity behaves in a way that enhances its life, or attempts to do so. Emmanuel Levinas, 1905 to 1995, was a French Jewish philosopher who was originally from Lithuania. Levinas criticized the philosophical tradition in which things other than an Individual mind are represented to that mind in ideas or some other mental content. He thought that the paradigm for understanding consciousness was the face-to-face -face interactions between human beings. Such interactions are both particular and indescribable, as well as of inestimable importance. Lavina's main works are Totality and Infinity, 1964, Otherwise Than Being or Beyond Essence. 1974, Difference and Transcendence, 1999, and Between Us, 1998. Albert Camus, 1913-1960, like Søren Kierkegaard, 1813-1855, had a burning question.
Who was George Simmel? George Simmel, 1858 to 1918, was a philosopher and early sociologist. He was born in Berlin and lived most of his life there. Simmel wrote about a wide range of subjects, including ethics, philosophy of history, education, religion, art, and money. His writing style was digressive rather than tightly analytic. As was expected in German philosophy at that time. Overall, as a Lebensphilosoph, or philosopher of life. Simmel saw life as more than itself in other words, more than the human biological organism and its processes because it was productive, particularly in cultural creativity. Perhaps Simmel's most distinctive work was his philosophy of money, 1900. A subject that few philosophers have directly addressed, then or since. He also wrote about fashion. What were George Simmel's thoughts on fashion and money? Simmel distinguished between individuals' personal selves and social selves. The latter being necessary for functioning in complex societies. Both fashion and money had symbolic uses in this sense. Simmel believed that fashion was limited to life in cities, because, as he wrote, it intensifies a multiplicity of social relations, increases the rate of social mobility and permits individuals from lower strata to become conscious of the styles and fashions of upper classes. His view of money was similar in that he felt it can operate as an impersonal form of exchange, as well as having value. Through money, subordination, and domination can be expressed. While at the same time money permits more freedom within society. Simmel was also aware of the disadvantages of the use of money in. Its ability creates special hardships and crises in social identity. Did Sigmund Freud analyze himself? Yes, he did, and several examples show that he aimed for complete disclosure. On his own Oedipus complex, he wrote a friend, I have found, in my own case too. The phenomenon of being in love with my mother and jealous of my father, and I now consider it a universal event in early childhood. Even if not so early as in children who have been made hysterical. He was also just as willing to analyze literary characters and authorship. Thus, he famously wrote about Shakespeare's Hamlet. Fleetingly the thought passed through my head that the same thing might be at the bottom of Hamlet as well. I am not thinking of Shakespeare's conscious intention, but believe, rather, that a real event stimulated the poet to his representation, in that his unconscious understood the unconscious of his hero. Freud also collected his own memory lapses, slips of the tongue, and dreams for analysis. In the 1936 article A Disturbance of Memory on the Acropolis, 
he explained why he felt doubtful and uneasy when he visited the Acropolis in Greece in 1904, it must be that. A sense of guilt was attached to the satisfaction in having gone such a long way. There was something about it that was wrong, that from earliest times had been forbidden. It was something to do with a child's criticism of his father. With the undervaluation which took the place of the overvaluation of earlier childhood. It seems as though the essence of success was to have got further than one's father. And as though to excel one's father was still something forbidden. Freud's father had been too poor to make such a trip. And not educated enough to have been interested in the Acropolis. Who was Herbert Marcuse? Herbert Marcuse, 1898 to 1979 generally inspired left-wing thought in the United States after he was exiled from Germany in 1933. He was. For example, African-American political activist Angela Davis dissertation advisor. And Abby Hoffman, one of the radical founders of the New Left, studied with him as well. Marcuse's primary theme was that philosophy is necessary to combat political oppression. He drew on Friedrich Nietzsche, 1844-1900, and Sigmund Freud, 1856-1939, to criticize Marxism for its underlying Enlightenment faith in reason. He thought that Western democracies, as well as communist regimes. Used scientific methods to deprive people of freedom through mass education and the trivialization of culture into entertainment. His major theme was the ways in which political repression was mirrored in psychosexual repression. His main works include Reason and Revolution, 1941, Eros and Civilization. 1955, One Dimensional Man, 1964, and Critique of Pure Tolerance, 1969. What did Maurice Merleau Ponty mean by a phenomenology of perception? Merleau-Ponty opposed the abstract natures of both empiricism, which generalized, and idealism, which denied the direct experience and existence of physical reality. He proclaimed that the perceiving mind is an incarnate mind, meaning that it was in the body in the sense of being coincident with the body. Perception is a physical process involving eyes, ears, the nose, the hands, rather than only the mind. His focus was thus on the human body as a perceiving, living part of world. A position theretofore much neglected in philosophical inquiry. According to Merleau-Ponty, perception is neither abstract nor scientific. Rather, all perception is lived, it is the experience of human beings in the world. Consciousness is, to use a later term, embodied and always engaged in perceiving the world. What is phenomenological about human experience is that what is perceived cannot be separated from how it is perceived or from how it is described. In conversation with Ferdinand de Saussure, 1857 to 1913, 
Merleau-Ponty composed the prose of the world. 1969, claiming that meaning is not determined by history but by the subject's actual experience in the world. Language is itself continually changing as a result of this experience. In The Visible and the Invisible Merleau-Ponty had intended to show how communication and thought can go beyond perception, but he died before completing that project. Who were Max Horkheimer and Theodore Adorno? Max Horkheimer 1893 to 1973 and Theodore Adorno 1903 to 1969 were founding members of the Frankfurt School and they were its leaders in exile Horkheimer was a cultural critic and social philosopher Adorno was a cultural critic and musicologist Horkheimer's ideal was a general understanding of the place of human beings in society. He thought, contrary to orthodox Marxists who often viewed society from the standpoint of the proletariat, that no social class at that time escaped distortions in its social worldview. Adorno thought that Austrian composer Arnold Schoenberg's atonal music supported human autonomy or freedom. And he strongly condemned jazz as a form of music for the masses, in contrast, in a way. Given their shared view that Marxism should not be culturally centered on the proletariat. It is not surprising that Horkheimer and Adorno collaborated, producing Dialectic of Enlightenment, 1974. They argued that the progress sought in the Enlightenment could not be achieved and that instead the result would be either mass capitalistic vulgarity in a consumer economy, or totalitarian brutality. Who was Emile Durkheim? Emile Durkheim, 1858-1917, taught at the universities in Bordeaux and Paris. And is credited with having founded the academic field of sociology in France. His goal was to develop sociology as a positive science with its own subject matter. His major contribution in this regard was an insistence that society could not be reduced to the nature and behavior of the human individuals that constituted it. His principal works were The Division of Labor in Society, 1893, The Rules of Sociological Method, 1895, Suicide, 1897, and The Elementary Forms of Religious Life, 1912. In his case, it was, why should a human being not commit suicide? The question arose for him from his apprehension of the human condition as absurd. Together with the absence of God and a forever frustrated search for meaning. Camus was a friend of Jean-Paul Sartre, 1905-1980, but they became alienated from each other as a result. Of Camus' critique of communist tyranny in his essay I'm Favor of Revolutionary Struggle, The Rebel, 1951. His novel The Plague, 
1947, dramatized the ever-presence of death in human life. In his non-fiction essay The Myth of Sisyphus, 1942, Camus claims that meaning can be found by affirming the absurd and then rebelling against it, as in Imagine Sisyphus Happy. Sisyphus punishment by Zeus consists of eternally rolling a large boulder up a mountain. Only to begin again after he has reached the top and the boulder has rolled down again. His crimes were first to put death in chains and then escape death himself. Camus was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1957. His own death in a car crash raised the question of his suicide. Paul Ricoeur, 1913-2005, wrote on a variety of subjects. Including existentialism, phenomenology, ethics, psychology, and theory of language. All of his work was distinguished by a deep engagement with key figures in the history of philosophy. His Freedom and Nature, 1950, was received as a rejection of Sartre's theory of freedom. Ricoeur argued that willing always has an involuntary component, which works as a kind of built-in resistance. What is voluntary consists of motive, decision, and consent, each of which has its own involuntary moment. The involuntary moments include birth, death, character already developed, the body, and the unconscious. First, it's not clear that Sartre equated freedom with acts of will. Because freedom is present in all consciousness. Second, Sartre would have said that what we accept or recognize as Involuntary requires a free choice of bestowing that particular meaning. 